So Maestro is a very, very simple way to do UI tests on Android, and I believe it sports iOS, React Native, a bunch of different things. I think they even have like an experimental web driver for UI testing web. Um, but I ran into these guys at DroidCon, and I was, I was pretty excited about how easy it is to write UI tests. Um, let me make sure you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. Let's see. How do I make my terminal giant? M plus. Oh. <laughs> what is it? Uh, Command plus makes the font bigger. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we got big font here. Um, so I already have Maestro installed. It's just brew install Maestro. You can install it that way. And then that's basically all you need to do to be able to do what I'm going to do here. Uh, so we're going to make a brand new file here, my own my desktop. Let's go to my desktop. And I'm going to make a new file. We'll just call it gdg.yaml. So Maestro uses YAML files. Uh, we will open that file up that we just made. Code. Then I'm going to hop over to Chrome and just grab their little get it started thing here. I'm going to paste that into code. Make this one big too. All right, so I'm gonna just pull up this emulator and we'll we'll write a test against, let's do the clock. We can do any of these, but uh, I messed around with the clock earlier, so we'll do that. Actually, this is exactly what I want here. So I'm just grabbing the package name of the clock, which is android.deskclock. So we're gonna paste in that for our app ID here and this YAML file. And then launch app is still valid. This tap on isn't really valid anymore. So this is a simple Maestro script here, YAML file that will launch the app. So if you watch on the emulator here, if I do Maestro GDG, I think it's Maestro test, GDG, and we'll actually do dash C. Uh, if I do this dash C flag, what it's going to do is it's going to watch the file. So whenever that file changes, it's going to restart my test. And it's going to keep the test active. It's a little bit easier to iterate on it that way. So we'll do gdg.yaml. And if we did that right, we should see it launch the clock. And there it is. Um, so let me close this. Now let's... Let's make it do something. So let's put our tap on back in there and we're gonna have a tap on timer. So we changed it, just launched, it tapped on timer. So a few more things in here. Let's have it tap on the number one. And we'll tap on number four. So save, it's relaunching. Should tap on the one and the four. So super easy. Um, but let's say we want to do something more complex, like this play button here. Like, how do we tap on that? We we don't really know because we can't. It's not really showing text or anything. Uh, so one thing that's really nice is they bundle this tool called Maestro Studio. So we'll launch that, and that gives us this interface here. We can see our calculate or our timer app, and it's kind of you can actually work entirely in this and build out your entire automation here. But for now, we just want to know like how can we click on this play button? So I'm going to click on that. It's going to pop up with some suggestions here, like we could do tap on start. I don't know how that really works because it doesn't have the start text. Maybe it's a accessibility or something. 
Uh, but this one looks good. We are going to copy this guy, maybe. Okay, there we go. So we could actually run that right in here too. Click play. Eventually it's thinking. There it goes. So that started my timer, but we don't really want that here. So I'm going to copy that and make it a part of my actual script in code. So now we have launch the app, tap on timer, tap on one, tap on four, and then tap play. So that should start our timer running. Uh, and actually it probably already did it behind the scenes here. Oh, there it goes. Uh, and I, I broke it already, but let's, uh, you'll notice it waited there. It's also smart in that it was, it was already on the timer screen, so it, it couldn't tap on one, but then it saw, I made it go to the, the one. So it, it was able to smartly know that, okay, now I can tap on one, but let's start it from scratch. So we'll come over here and we can hit enter here to restart the flow. See it launch, click on one, four and start it. So it was super simple. Um, you can also do things like assertions, which are in, where the UI testing important stuff comes in there. So let's say we want to assert that timer was actually clicked on by asserting that our action bar has the, the word timer. So we click on timer and we can see here's the, the ID. So we will go ahead and copy that one. And after clicking timer, we want to assert that, whoops, I think it's actually assert one. If we go over here, it will, should suggest that too. Assert visible is what we want. So we will change that to assert visible. It's really cool. Assert visible has the exact same like parameters that tap on does. So we're doing ID here, but we can also do like uh, GitHub Copilot is suggesting here. We got text timer, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to assert once we tap on timer, we're going to assert that there is a view visible that has action bar title as the ID and timer as the text. So it, it actually already went past that step, but you can see, I'll, I'll restart it here so you can see the check marks pop in. Um, but you can see it's launching, tapping the timer, waiting for that to happen, asserting that. Then you can you can kind of see the it progress through each one of the steps there. Uh, I actually left my bad tap on down below here. I think. Oops, there goes our timer. Oh no, that's one's still good. That's the the start. Um, so you can see how easy it is to build a UI test with this tool. It's very quick. You can do different things like swipe and different kinds of gestures and stuff too. Um, there's also some extra tools they give you. I'm not going to show these. They're they're all they're just as simple though. So one that's really cool is Maestro Mock Server, um, which is it's built into the tools tool as well. So just like Maestro Studio, we can do mock whoops, Maestro Mock Server open. It's gonna open an interface like this. I don't have it set up right now, but you do have to add uh, an SDK to your app in order for this part to work. But it's super easy to set up. Once you set it up, you can uh, basically like write super simple rules, writing rules. So in this example here, they're writing a, a mock server rule to mock whenever a call goes off to slash endpoint. 
it's going to return this JSON of message mocked by Maestro mock server. Um, so it's a really simple way to also mock your backend. That way you take you take your instable backend out of the equation when you're writing UI tests, which is really important. Uh, that's still experimental, but I've messed around with that, and it's it's a really cool, easy way to to mock your backend. Uh, they also have this this is like a real mock server that's acting like a middleman between your app and the real backend, and it will like forward uncaught requests onto the real backend. There's also, I think I haven't messed with this one, but network mocking is a little bit different approach where it doesn't have a mock server at all. It just on the client, on the app itself, it it says whenever a call goes out, return this. So a little bit different approach, but uh, both of those tools are available. And any questions on Maestro? Yeah, uh, so since the app works, what would happen if like it tried to find one and one wasn't there, like mm -hmm. when it clicks, it doesn't click? Um, it'll just sit there and wait and eventually time out in the air. So if I put tap on this, still going to launch the app. Uh, you'll see the check mark. And now you'll see waiting to tap on one, two, three, whatever. And I don't know what the default time is, but eventually this is just going to bomb and say I couldn't find it. Hmm. There it goes. So yeah, test broke right there. Cool. Did they, so all the code's in YAML. So mm -hmm. I think kind of, I imagine that it was supported in iOS as well. Yep. Uh, so how would you, I would have like, typically in these testing frameworks, you share code uh, between your iOS and Android test and maybe like some testing frameworks kind of, you write business like wording like what you're doing and then you convert that over to actually what is happening in the app. Uh like is that built in and like in like kind of shared code of like how do you share code? Because the YAML's not really a programming language more of a configuration file. Mm -hmm. Um that is a good question. I haven't messed with that, but I'm assuming like there's probably gonna be some places that aren't quite exactly the same or if your app matches identical maybe it'll just work um, yeah. mm -hmm. like you'll probably have to be careful like if you're doing tap on by id like you have to make sure you have the same ids or something um so it's probably going to take some amount of effort to make sure that it works on both um it does fully support like conditions and stuff so you could probably say for this one on android do this path on iOS, do this path. I'm, I'm assume, assuming you could do that if you wanted to. Any other questions? No, this is super cool. Yeah, um, I guess uh, I'm just kind of really impressed by this because I've had to deal with a lot of UI testing in my own work. Um, and yeah, the whole question of is, you know, a single test Android and iOS is, you know, really tough and I, I'm not experienced enough to know or whatever or how they actually do it. Um, but does this support like snapshot testing and how stable have you like kind of seen development with this? Because like I, my, in my own personal experience, I've used Xcode and like Xcode's built in UI testing and that isn't even stable. Um, it's really hard to develop in this. So this looks insanely better. Um, but have you noticed any flakiness or anything like that? Um, uh, like I said, I, I've only messed around with this. I want to like start using it more at some point, but, I. Uh, through messing around with it, I haven't had any issues. It's been super smooth and it's actually a really enjoyable experience to work on too. Cause like I said, you just change the YAML file and it relaunches the test and you can watch it. And it's been super in the, smooth. In the studio, can you record actions and it just writes the test for you? Um, yeah, it's, I don't think it's like exactly like mm -hmm. recording actions. Maybe they have a mode for that. I would imagine. Oh, I guess you're you are just kind of writing it there, so that doesn't even. Yeah. Um, I think I shut down my. Yeah, I, I shut this thing mm -hmm. down. But it it's essentially like, 
you click on one and it gives you some options to do. You pick the option, you can move on to the next one. So it's actually pretty close to recording, but yeah, it might actually be a little bit better um, because like you showed, like it could, you could pick a cert or, you know, something else than just tapping and stuff. So no, super cool. I, I I've dealt with Appium and that is definitely not <laughs> anywhere near what this is. Um, this looks yeah, really fun to use and I, I might actually use it in my own personal apps, but it's just brew install. And then, yeah, just the YAML file. That seems too easy. Yeah. It's, it's crazy easy. And yeah, it's definitely a ton of fun. Uh, snapshot testing you asked about that would, mm -hmm. I, I don't think they have anything for snapshot testing that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Towards React Native. <laughs> Maestro is uh, a testing tool for Android and iOS. Yeah. That would be similar to the Prism and Yeah. Something like that. Yep. That's just a, a testing tool for mobile. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Selenium is <clears throat> more equivalent to Appium, which is very yeah. equivalent to Maestro. So Selenium and right. Appium are basically the same thing. And this is just an alternative to Appium, I guess. Yep. Okay. Right. It looks like this might not be something that, when do you use it? So like speaking of like testing between like Android and iOS and not knowing what elements you have and stuff, it looks like you can even tap on like coordinates, like a percentage in and like a percentage up and down. So if you don't have the same thing, but you have it in the same spot on the screen, you might be able to use something like that to be able to just like hit the same area. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, you can. I don't usually like doing like raw positions like that. Yeah, yeah. you don't know what's going to be there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, these are all the parameters for, for tap on, for example. Oh, this is interesting. Relative position tap on. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how it works? Is it like just going over the accessibility tree or something like that? Um, I haven't dug in that far and not sure because ids are xml right there's no ids in compose so i wonder uh how it magically does compose maybe yeah compose has ids with the accessibility tree that you just don't even know about yeah, like that. not sure I, I would imagine this clock app is composed by now, but I don't know what's on this, the hood there. Here's an example of a conditional. Uh, this is saying, whoops, I lost it. Uh, so this is saying when visible, when indicator views visible, then it's gonna run this subflow.yaml, which oh, is- Oh, the tests, cool. Cool. Well, that's all I had. That is 